do that? How am I going to live if I don't? I'm glad you ask. Because Christ lives through me. Amen. If I give myself to him, if I become his servant, if my life is a life of service to Christ by serving others, and Christ lives through me, he promised me he would take care of my needs. Amen. You all know the scriptures, and we quote them, and they sound great, but we live opposite of what we say. Mm -hmm. If he so clothed the grass, which is here today and gone tomorrow, if he feeds the birds, if he knows when one falls from the sky, you know all the scriptures. How much better are you? Don't you trust him? And in your mind, you're saying, yes, I do. But look at your life. Amen. Come on. Look at your life. Saying it in your head ain't enough. Saying it with your mouth ain't enough. Say it with your heart. Mm -hmm. Say it with your actions. Say it with what you do. Say it with how you live. This is who the church is supposed to be. I'm going to tell you something. You, 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 every one of you in my life should be ahead of anything I think I need or I want or I desire or I'm convinced I have to have. Amen. And the Bible backs that up. Esteem others higher than yourself. That's right. Think also on the things of others. That's what the Bible says. And when I do not do that, I am not pleasing to God. I am not that servant that he has called me to be. I am not that minister that he has called me to be. Unless the body of Christ is ahead of everything else. It's not pleasing to God. And I'm only touching on a couple of scriptures, but you go and you read it. And you all know where Paul talks about the body. You all know where he talks about how we are fitted together and we're to care for one another. And you all know all that. I don't have to go there. But that's supposed to be the priority. And believe me, God don't lie. And he said, if you do this and you live this way, I will take care of you. It may not be how you want. It may not be how you think. It may not be how you've got it all figured out in your head. But God will take care of you. You may have to drive a, a 63 Volkswagen instead of a, a 2018 Lexus. But if it gets you from here to there, what does it matter? That's right. That's right. You might have to eat cornbread and beans instead of steak and lobster. Yeah, that's good to me. But if it fills up the empty spot, what does it matter? If you put God first, I will guarantee you on the authority of God's word, he will take care of you. Amen. And I can tell you, and you know I'm telling you the truth, he will give you what you need. Okay. We've got needs mixed up with wants. But all that is because we're not living like this. We are like that because we're not living like this. Christ came, the king of glory, laid down the glory, laid down everything to come and live as a pauper, to come and live with nothing and have nowhere to lay his head and all these other things that he went through and did. You know it all, I don't have to tell you. He did all that for others, not for himself. He wasn't looking for something for himself. He could have had everything. He's God. He could have had anything he wanted and everything he wanted. But you know what he wanted? Your well-being. That's what he wanted. That should be what we want. Others' well-being. Go to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Getting at verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be, may be, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. 
Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This is what I have been saying. This is what I have been talking about. Listen to what he's saying here. We are not to do anything through strife or vain glory. Uh, not to get uh, attention, not to get glory, not to get any recognition or any notice from it. He's saying, don't do anything for that reason. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And my mind goes to the scripture. Uh, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, heart, mind, soul, and body, and your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Everything. If you do those two, you fulfill it all. And we are to esteem others higher than ourselves. And you may say that you do, but I'm going to say this again. Examine your life. Do you esteem others higher than yourself? Uh, listen to me. I want you to really think about this. If I got a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, and a jar of jelly, and five dollars in my pocket, and you ain't got absolutely no money at all, nothing, not even a penny, and you have absolutely nothing to eat, what should I do? Yes. I can't give you the five bucks because that bread and that peanut butter and jelly ain't going to last very long. Or I need some milk to wash it down. I should give you that five bucks. But do we? No, because I'm thinking, well, if I give them the five bucks, what am I going to do tomorrow? Right. Trust God. Right. Believe God. I, listen, people, I know things are tight. And I know it's hard. And I know we've been raised in a society uh, to where we've been taught. And it's been ingrained in us. Look out for yourself. Make sure you got something put away for a rainy day. Get you a big old retirement built up and this and that and everything else. That goes opposite of the word. You know what the word says? Take no thought for tomorrow. And if you see somebody in need and you can do anything about it, do it. But we don't live that way. We are so concerned about what tomorrow is going to bring that's going to be bad for me. But I should be concerned about what's bad for you right now. And again, that may be a sole example, but if I have bread and peanut butter and jelly and five bucks, and I see a brother who is in need, and you all know the scripture, and I say, be filled. What good does that do? Come on. Amen. What good does that do? And that's how I'll pray for you. When you got that five bucks in your pocket. And then maybe we remember to pray for him, maybe we don't. That's not what it says. That's not what the book says. If you got it, give it. God will take care of you. Listen. In loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things. If you trust God, I know I'm repeating myself in different ways, but I want you to get it. If you trust God, if you believe God, if you've given yourself to God, if your life is a life of service for God, by serving others, He will take care of you so I don't got to worry about my life because I know He's got it. That's why I don't have to look on my own needs. I'm not telling you, uh, and I've heard people say this, but they got it all wrong. All you Christians, you sit around and pray God will just drop everything from heaven. That's not what I'm telling you to do. God says if you give yourself in service, then he will provide for you. He will meet your needs. Then he will take care of you. He's not telling you just sit around and don't do anything, and then he'll take care of you. But he says here, look not every man on his own things, but every man also <laughs> on the things of others. If I care more about you than I do myself, that's Christ's life. And we are to be Christ-like. He cared more about us than he did himself. That's why he went there. 
He put everyone else ahead of himself. And that is what we are supposed to do. Listen, I, I know I've talked a lot about the church, but this is what the church is supposed to be. This is what the church is supposed to be. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, there is, you know what I'm saying? I might as well just say it. The Catholic Church is billionaires. That's right. They have priceless art and antiques and jewels and this and that and everything else. And they want to get up and preach about helping the poor. Uh, there are churches, uh, you can call them Protestant church, whatever you want to call them, who spend millions on making a big fancy building and decorating it with gold accoutrements and making it all fancy and this and that. And there's people around about them in need. These things are not pleasing to God. You can't buy God's favor by building a fancy building. That's right. That's right. You can't buy God's favor uh, by owning a bunch of priceless things. The church is to give of itself to others. That's what the church is supposed to be. And as individuals, we make up the church, so that's what individuals are supposed to be. But we've made it uh, this thing. How do I prove I'm a good Christian? By how much stuff I got. That's what we've made it. That's what they get on TV and tell you. That's what they make it look like. Hey, you prove uh, how, how faithful you are and how good a Christian you are by how much money and stuff you got. But that's not the truth. That's not the word. Show me a rich disciple. Come on. That's right. Well, Paul was loaded, right? Even as a missionary traveling around, his heart burning to spread the gospel, he had to stop and work a while to make enough money to keep going. That whole prosperity and money thing that they talk about cannot be found in there anywhere. If anybody was going to be loaded because they were faithful, it would have been the disciples. It would have been Paul. It would have been those uh, that we read about in here. And none of them were like that. Why? Because they put others first. Their heart, their life, their call was service to others. And that is what the church is supposed to be. And I know I've said this sort of thing before, but I'm going to say it again. That ain't putting five bucks in an envelope and send it off to brother, I'm better than you. It's you giving of yourself. That's what it is. That's what we're supposed to be all about. That's what Christ called us to be. That's what Christ called us to do. He said, let not every man, um, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We are to have that mind of Christ. Service, giving, care, compassion, concern for others. Put yourself behind them. And we're not doing that, church. You are good people. I know you all. I love you all. You're good-hearted people. And you do a lot for other people. But we haven't yet gotten there to where we are doing it the way that Christ wants us to do it. And I'm not, I'm not picking and I'm not judging. I'm probably at the top of the list. But this is who we're to be. This is what Christ has called us for. And I, as I was telling you, if I got the peanut butter and jelly and I got five bucks, that hit me hard because I've done that. We need to understand what we are being called to. And listen, you can't live a life of service. You can't live a life like that and put everybody else above yourself unless you fully, 100%, no doubt about it, trust and believe God. And we do not. We say we do, but we do not. If we really believe God in everything that he said, we wouldn't worry and get concerned and have anxiety and heart attacks and stroke and all this stuff worrying over where the next dollar's coming from. Amen. This is where he wants us. This is where we need to be. It goes on. Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Listen, he didn't take something that was not his in order to be equal with God. He was God. He was equal with God. Listen, it was not robbery for him to be that. He was God. But 
made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And that is how we are to be, uh, to, to not seek anything for ourselves. He wasn't seeking a reputation or praise or a pat on the back or anything. And that's how we are supposed to be, not seeking after anything, uh, any reputation, any praise, anything for ourselves, but to be a servant to others. That is what Christ did. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We are to become obedient unto death, the death of our own wants, our own lusts, our own desires. That's what we are to die to. And just as Christ died to, to the flesh, just as Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, so are we to do that. Going back to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew 25, beginning at 34. This is Jesus speaking. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Amen. Now listen. Then shall I say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not, and naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. And they shall say to him, Lord, when saw we thee all these things, and did not minister to thee? And he shall say to them, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. How many times have you heard that and read that? And it sounds good. But think about what he said. Those people who did not help when they saw a need were cast into outer darkness. We are to live a life of service to Christ. And we do that by serving others. And he said it here. Whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. That's how we serve Christ. You see somebody in need, you see somebody hungry, you see somebody naked, uh, whatever the things he said here. And we do that, we're serving Christ by doing that. Then we become those ministers. Then we become those servants. But listen, I want you to hear this. He said to the one standing on the left, you didn't give. Therefore, you didn't give to me. Therefore, cast them out. God's going to throw me in hell if I don't give a dollar to that guy on the corner with the sign. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you, think about what the Word says. Let the Word speak to you. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Think about what that Word says. We read so often and don't stop and think what it's saying. I would beat myself, but I got to. If, he gave, if you gave to these ones he was talking about or visited or whatever, or took them in or whatever, he said you did it to me. But if you didn't do that, then you did it not to Christ. You turned your back on Christ. You rejected helping Christ. That's what the word's saying. And they were cast out. And again, am I saying if you don't give that guy a dollar or a cup of soup or whatever you're going to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm reading you the word and I want the Holy Ghost to speak to your heart. I want you to think about this. I want you to hear this word deep down in here. What is God saying to you? What is he calling you to do? How is he calling you to live? How is he calling you to be? Um, but 
these things matter. These things are extremely important. And I know I've said this a lot lately. We don't take this thing seriously.